All right, so here we have the earliest form of terrain generator. It's full, it's purely infinite. All directions you could fly around forever and see these quaint rolling hills, I guess you could call them. Um, but there's nothing very complex and it's pretty bland, obviously, it's all in stone. But this is just a very, very early prototype of terrain generator I'm here to show you guys. Just because I don't want to go too far and make it too complicated when explaining this stuff. So in the code here, very little has changed, however, we do have two new methods, set block and get block. These are given to you in the Java docs, so let's speak of Java docs. Um, just go to the org.bucket.generator.chunkgenerator Java docs. In here, you'll see them provided to you. Um, I modify them slightly so they take materials instead of block IDs, but you can keep them the same, I guess. And then up here, we have a private static final int magnitude and sea level. Those are just uh, control variables to make the train rolling hills, basically. Then we have initialized chunk double array of shorts. Uh, this is given to you in the Java docs as well, right here. And this is where it gets into the fun part. This is where it seriously starts to get fun, because everything at this point has just been bland, mindless work. Here is where the noise generation comes in. If you don't know what noise generation is, it is truly wonderful. <laughs> Basically visualized noise looks like this, except for it's infinite in all directions, and purely random. Well, not purely random, but you know what it means. It's mostly random. So that's what generates this. That's, this is the moving force behind this. The simplex octave generator in here is what generates the terrain almost in full, at this point especially. It, it takes in two parameters, the seed and the number of octaves. Um, Octaves is just a smoothing mechanism. If you have like a hundred, it's gonna be super smooth. If you have one, it's rough, so I keep it at four. And then down here, we're saying the scale of it. Uh, the higher the number, basically the more natural it is to the actual simplex octave generator. However, it looks very spiky, so I have it one of 50. If you want very smooth hills, you would do one of 100, for example. If you're trying to do something very, very big, like biomes or continents even, you'd do way bigger, like one of 1,000 type of thing. Then down here we have two nested for loops, each for, well, for each coordinate, x and z coordinate. This is x and this is z. I'm a 2D plane. And we have the calculated real x and real z values. These are necessary to make the train generator to actually, like, the noise generator to actually work, because otherwise you're sending in the same 0 to 16 values you receive in these for loops every time you generate a chunk, and that was an early mistake I made. Whoops. This is where the magic happens. This max height variable here is where all the magic happens. This is where you generate the noise. We're doing 2D noise here, just X and Z. There's no no 3D noise yet. Maybe we'll get into that, I don't know. And then we're sending in a frequency and amplitude. These values can be changed, and do change the terrain generator ultimately, but I don't really mess with them. I think 1 point, or 0 0.5 is a fine value. And then normalize basically keeps the noise generator, the values between negative 1 and 1, um, just to make it easier for us to use it. That way we can have our own magnitude value, multiply it, even though you think amplitude works that way, it actually doesn't. Amplitude is very strange. And then we're just adding a base of 64. That way, uh, yeah, it averages out to 64, roughly, the train shown here, if you go down. And then here we have just a simple check to make sure that the max height isn't greater than the world height, because I have done that before and it breaks everything. And this is where the magic happens. This is where the terrain is actually set up and the blocks are placed. Uh, it's just a simple for loop on the y-axis, zero to the max height, sets the block along the the uh, coordinates all the way up to the top. Fill it with stone, it's all the way down. All this is stone. I mean, that's all there is to a very, very, very basic and simple form of terrain generator. Is this the end of it? No, of course not. I have a lot more I want to get through, but if you're happy with something that looks like this, I guess you can stop here and move on. There's a lot of fun topics ahead, though. Even in this video, we're going to work a bit more on how to make this terrain look just more natural, I guess. Just to show you how different values of the noise generator algorithm, well, the ones that we can change at least, um, it acts in different ways and give you different outputs. This is, I'm going to call this the default state. It looks pretty normal, just a bunch of rolling hills. Has a magnitude of 15 and a scale of 1 out of 50. If we change our values here, magnitude of 15 to magnitude of 50, and a scale of 20, 1 out of 20, makes something that looks like this. And it does actually look pretty cool, I mean, really, but not really playable necessarily. Has some really deep values too, which look really cool from down here. Magnitude changes the amplitude of the waves, basically, the generated waves here. And uh, the scale makes it smaller scale. Like, the, the scale got smaller even though the value got bigger. Um, so everything's a lot closer together. If you were to use the same magnitude value, same 50, if you were to make the scale, though, 100, 
everything now that the uh, scale is 100 or 1 out of 100 instead of 1 out of 20, everything will look much smoother, even though the magnitude is the same. All right, so here's the current status of the very simple train generator. I have, uh, well, it looks really different, doesn't it? Basically, what's going on here is there's, there's three different noise generators. One that does overall elevation, so that, that, that lets us have these like nice big bodies of water and like these hilly areas over here. The one for general roughness, basically um, it's a multiplier that multiplies the detail. The detail is what generates these small hills. The elevation does basically all of the actual like lakes and the hilly areas and just the plain areas. And then the roughness just multiplies the detail to make it either like mounds like this or like small little hills like that. But basically it all works out together pretty nicely. Uh, a very, very, very simple version of a train generator, admittedly. It doesn't look very nice. This is apparently what Notch used for the very beginnings of Minecraft, like pre-alpha, um, this type of train generation. It's very bland, like the hills are flat and rolling, um, there's no real cliffs, there's no overhangs, which is something he explicitly described as being amazing or whatever. It, it is nicer than the way it was before, obviously, but still just a little bit bland. Uh, we'll look at the code a bit. I changed the type of noise generator from Simplex to Perlin because Perlin does look nicer, admittedly. It does, it ha Perlin is, is faulty, and I guess the faults were making it so nice of a train, it, it just isn't consistent. Where Simplex was kind of consistent, it wasn't obviously like fully consistent, but Perlin has stranger looking hills and stuff, so gives it, gives these like oval like shapes instead of circles. So there's three generators, now there's elevation, detail, and rough. Detail being the smallest, rough being middle, and elevation being Kind of like what sets biomes, honestly. It's almost like a biome map. And we pull all the noise values, all the noise values are the same, still the same values here. And then here's the formula for that. Um, it's just elevation noise plus detail noise time, times rough noise. Gives you this look here. And magnitude, um, is, to, magnitude is 64 now. Um, this makes the terrain a lot smoother because the rough noise is multiplied by the detail noise. So this makes the terrain a lot smoother. So this is, yeah, 64 magnitude. Now. And the median level, I change it from sea level to median level because it's not really a sea level. If, unless you want half the map to be sea. Um, but I don't, so the median level is 70 and seawater is 63. And then down here we have uh, what makes the water. Basically it's just if the max height is less than 64, there'll be a for loop that runs from the max height up to sea level and put some water and then setting the uh, sand blocks underneath the water, and then the surface grass and dirt blocks underneath the uh, land. And then just to make everything look nicer, I'm setting the biomes to plain because there's a lot of swamp land, and the swamp land makes the grass look ugly, so just removed all the swamp biome. All of this is, all of this is plains now. And that's all there is uh, for a 90 line terrain generator. Um, it's very simple, like the code wise and like understanding wise, this is one of the more basic terrain generators. So that's all there is uh, for, for this basic introduction to terrain generation. Next time we're going to be looking at 3D noise and how we're going to use 3D noise to generate some really epic hopefully looking terrain um, and how this is how Minecraft does it nowadays. So here's hoping for the best with that. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.